Obviously. A senior university lecturer has slammed... Do you know, I now cringe when I see when I read those words. A senior university lecturer, because you sort of sense that it's going to be followed by one of these stories, has slammed Google Translate for sexism as gender-neutral languages are translated into English with gendered pronouns. Dr. Dora Varga from Exeter uh, was appalled when she tried to translate Hungarian, a gender-neutral language with no male or female pronouns. Uh, Google translates automatically put he or she before different verbs when changing into English, depending on the activity it denoted. She was placed before she was placed before domestic chores such as cleaning and sewing, and he was used for intellectual pursuits such as being a politician or a professor. Ella Whelan is a columnist at Spite Online. What has happened down there at Google HQ, Ella? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I mean, it'll come as a shock to no one that Google Translate is a pretty crude tool. I mean, anyone who's gone on holiday like I have, um, and I've got very few language skills. I know a little bit of German from school, and that's about it. You can type or talk into Google Translate and show the person in whatever country you're in, and they often laugh at you. They it's, do, yes. it's, it's not an accurate tool. <laughs> um, but the horror here is supposedly the suggestion that people would use Google Translate, that it would come out with these uh, sexist tropes, you know, preferring to suggest that women are the one that do the wa washing up the dishes rather than men. Uh, and that the user, the human being who has the iPhone or whatever it is, then would just simply parrot those sexist tropes, that it's a kind of uncritical assessment that would just means sexism gets proven to be ripe on the basis of these Google um, translations. I mean, that to me, that's the most irritating and shocking and insulting thing out of all of this. Not that, um, you know, artificial intelligence or algorithms or whatever it is that drives Google Translate is uh, crude and behind the times and not an accurate measure of where society is at, but that there is this outrage and suspicion of people not being able to make decisions on the basis of uh, on, or, you know, or that they would be influenced to be sexist on the basis of a tool like this. Yes, because I was wondering what Dr. Dora thinks might be happening. Are we having hordes of discombobulating students who need uh, counselling as a result of their endeavours on Google Translate? I mean, one assumes that might be part of what she's concerned about, because the, but... some of the little petals might need help after this. Well, I mean, particularly in a university setting, again, I'm not a language professor, but I would I would hazard a guess that if you're using Google Translate to learn Hungarian or to learn English or whatever it is, then you're probably not doing what your lecturer wants you to do. It is merely a crude tool that we use um, out of necessity in some scenarios. And if you really want to look at the proper way of translating something, you wouldn't use a bot like Google yes. Translate. Yes, yeah, yeah. I, I, did, I did French at Oxbridge, but really it was Google <laughs> that tipped me into fluency. I mean, that wouldn't be, that probably isn't the thing that I think most people take away from Google Translate. You could have an, in, you know, you could have, and people have had interesting discussions about the way in which artificial intelligence or or these kind of methods of, um, you know, algorithms or things like that reflect what is or trends that are in society. So the the main uh, way in which this is used is in particular is with unconscious bias um, training and unconscious bias tests, which is uh, that there are kind of a test that was developed in America to where you are asked to very quickly click on pictures, which tell you, you know, you, you, you get the word good floated in front of you and you're shown a picture of a white person, a picture of a black person. And on the basis of tests like that, very quick responses from people, it's supposed to show whether or not you have implicit bias. And these tests claim that people have implicit bias and that it's sort of hardwired into us, much like this mm. professor is suggesting that Google Translate has implicit bias hardwired into it. But of course, these, these kinds of tests are always incredibly crude because human beings are far more complex than that. And the of truth course. of the matter is that, you know, whatever, whatever a machine spits out is at the, at the starting point, has, uh, it, it learns from human beings and mm. their thoughts. I mean, it's not, we don't, we're not quite in the point at which Google Translate is operating um, separate from, uh, from human control of course. yet. Of course. But, I, go on. But the, the, the real question is, you know, 
are we living in a sexist society? Do we think, particularly in the UK, that women are the ones who are beautiful and washing dishes? Although everyone who's washed dishes properly knows that you can't really do those two things at the same time. Um, or are we professors? Are you know? Are, are we anything we want to be? And of course, it's the latter. And uh, you know, w- what are we more concerned with? Are we more concerned with um, you know? nitpicking i think and fear mongering around small things like this or were we or do we want to talk about serious issues that relate to yeah. um remaining sexism women's freedom you know we've we've just had two weeks of very serious discussion about women's freedom it's rather dispiriting to then see that we're right back at the kind of banal end of things here we're talking about google translate true I, I wonder whether she was she also seemed perturbed just merely by the use of the words he and she as well i think she perhaps thought that was also inappropriate, in addition to the stereotypical pursuits that men and women apparently do. Well, that language has now become, I mean, I'm saying this as a journalist who thinks, you know, words are, are my tools, are incre- words are incredibly important, and language is incredibly important. But we now have this uh, really quite uh, quite degrading obsession with policing language, particularly when it comes to pronouns, particularly when it comes to the discussion about gender and language. There's this, you know, using the word he or she or they inappropriately can land you in serious hot water. Mm. Um, and there's there's a real inflexibility about it, which, you know, as, as a literature student um, or someone who is interested in the growth and evolve, and, you know, the, the way in which language evolves, I mean, the inflexibility around censorship of language, around the hostility to people uh, using language in different ways is really worrying. I mean, we are getting now to the point in which people are rejecting all you know all form of context when they are using words i mean it's it's one thing to uh, mistakenly uh, parrot something off google translate if you're taking this example um, and use he and she in the wrong way it's another thing entirely to do it deliberately with intent and ignoring that intent mm. is really what this professor is and people like her are doing it's simply saying that you take words at face value that you don't look at what the meaning is behind them that's often the case with lots of arguments against, you know against free speech online for example is that's merely uttering a word now merely uttering the word woman for example in relation to the gender debate can be seen as threatening or abusive Indeed. Um, pretty crazy ella it is yes certainly on that last point we absolutely agree ella whelan who's a columnist of course at spiked online uh, with reference to the story of dr dora who's lost her shizzle over the pronouns